Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at an upcoming feature in Firefox. And yes, this is Linux and Windows and Mac and Android and all sorts of other stuff. There are some new changes inside of the upcoming version. Some of them are um, some of them are just minor changes. A few of them are going to scratch my head going, why would you do that? But uh, of course, we want to focus on the big one, which is Firefox translation. Now, translations is something that um, some people are like, why bother? We should focus on other things and this is bloat. Other people are in the comments of these posts are saying, yes, it's about time we need this. Now, the reality is there's been a Firefox extension for this for a while by the Mozilla Foundation. And uh, I sit kind of on the fence. I am not a fan of Firefox bloat. I'm also, though, not a fan of installing a lot of extensions. So it depends, I guess, on whether you think that uh, a web browser should have translations built into it or not. Uh, in some of the comments, some people have said they've stopped using Firefox just because they need the translation. Of course, there is always that extension we can use, but not everybody knows about it. I mean, I didn't know about it until I was doing research for, uh, for this article here today. But at the same time, I also don't generally visit a lot of sites that has multiple different languages on it. So there have been a few times that I can remember where I did have to go on to a, uh, a site requiring translation and I would just jump on over there with Chromium just to see what's over there and then, you know, come on back to Firefox when we're done. But the upcoming version of Firefox may have embedded into it our translations function. Uh, and uh, this is in the beta for 117. However, as one of the articles pointed out, that there's been a few things in the last few versions of beta that are not yet rolled out, but mm, we'll see. Let's go ahead, though, and have a brief look at what is going on. So from OMG Ubuntu, which I think had uh, the better article, if not for the links in the article itself, at least there's they there were people in the comments that had some information as well. Of course, a lot of people use a Chrome-based browser, which has built-in translations already. The problem is those translations require you to take that information, ping it across the Google servers, use Google Translate, and then come on down, which basically means that Google, uh, I'm assuming they're going to track your IP address, they're going to see what page you're on, and they have more information about you that you're visiting a site that's not native to the language set by your operating system and or your browser, and that information might be useful to them. And so the question is, how can we have language translation without that? Now, one of the challenges here is that having language models onto the browser itself, if you're not using it, is indeed a lot of bloat, especially if you're going to take a privacy focus, which Firefox is trying to do. And so there are definitely some pluses and some minuses to how this is working, but I actually, looking through it as I understand it, um, not having played with the beta myself, if I'm looking through it as I understand it, I actually think this is a decent implementation. Of course, we have the ability to never translate. We have the ability to not use the thing. We probably have the ability in the about config to turn this off altogether. And you, it is up to you as the end user to download the specific languages you're going to use. But let's go ahead and have a look at the article first. And then I have some other thoughts and comments and other articles about it. So Google Chrome's built-in translators are very useful to some people, of course, uh, not others. And uh, whenever I load a web page not in my native tongue, which is English, despite what my typos may suggest, ha ha ha, very good, Joey, uh, the browser asks if I want to translate the content, and most times you do. I mean, what's the purpose of landing on a page in French if you do not speak any French? Obviously, you're either in the wrong spot or you need to scratch your head and wonder, uh, parlez-vous français? Um, and so, <laughs> you have it. Um, but... Mozilla is going to be testing this feature. They're already testing it in the 117 beta, so maybe it will come out in 117. Maybe it's like, eh, not quite there yet and stick on. But at least we actually happen to have the, uh, we still do have the extension. We're going to have a look at the extension briefly in the event you want to try this out. 
So Mozilla wants to do a privacy respecting implementation. And this was my big concern is since, of course, Mozilla has a lot of funding from Google, are they just cramming the Google uh, extensions into this? And the it would appear the answer is no, they're not. But we'll go ahead and look a little bit deeper. So the pop-up appears when you load a web page in a non-default but supported by the feature language that the browser says translations happen on your device. So here is an, a close-up of that picture. So here we have a new translation window over here try private translations in Firefox which is a beta so you have to select what language you're translating from and what language you're translating to in the drop-down list now all of the translation occurs on the device not on the cloud and this means that there has to be language models involved so what they are doing is while they do have over a hundred languages supported you ha will have to download the languages directly. So instead of the site going out and saying, hey, you're loading a website in French, but your default system is English, would you like to translate this? Instead of taking the contents or the URL of the page up to a server, it instead is going to, at your prompt, download all of the language models needed to translate this from English to French and then you will then be able to translate it. So uh, this person says, uh, uh, in fact, he says that he, uh, uh, down here, he does all of his conversion magic locally and he computes on a potato. Uh, that must be like my Raspberry Pi. I might have to give this a try on a Raspberry Pi and see how well it works. And so he did say it takes a little bit longer. It's not as fast as Google Translate where it takes either the URL, probably the URL is what it's probably doing, does the compute and then sends that bait data back down. This is not going to do that. Everything is going to be done locally. So there is a new translation section in the settings panel where you can download offline translations and you can set up languages and or websites that auto translate. So and whenever you load a specific site, you can always translate it automatically without having to uh, go through any extra steps. So here you can see always translate French, never translate French, never translate the site. You can manage the languages and then there is an information about it. Hopefully this is something you can completely disable so we don't have yet another annoying thing hanging around in the URL bar of Firefox, but um, <laughs> that may be a little bit too much to ask from Mozilla. So you can click the cog in, in there and do the things I just mentioned. And of course, there's information here. You can actually download the beta version from Flathub. Uh, it might overrun your current Firefox, so be careful. Of course, Firefox, of course, is already preparing to have a page for this, but currently it's blank. Uh, this is at uh, support.mozilla.org slash uh, N-US, which is the English version, the KB, the your knowledge base, and then website translation. And it simply says a placeholder. And these fine people found this, uh, helped to write this article and Fabi. So thank you, Fabi, for uh, your blank page. Very e excellent. Now, as I said, this is not some brand new thing. This is just embedding into the browser an extension that is already out there. And so here is from Firefox, um, translate the web with Firefox, more than 100 languages uh, allowing you to download it. So they have, they talk about two here. One of is the Firefox translation extension. This one is the one that is more, it is locally and it is privacy focused. They do actually have a Google translate. So if you do not mind the Google stuff, you can put this in. It will involve it translating things faster, although you're going to give up a little bit of privacy to do the Google translate. But this is the web, the browser for the, the browser plugin for your translation into Firefox. And uh, this will translate a variety. So language supported in production. We have a few, see a few over here. Development, we have a few over here. I'm guessing maybe I had, I think I said a hundred languages earlier. I don't, that may not be correct. I don't know. We'll see. So what is powering this? Well, apparently what is powering this is the Bergamot project. 
So the Bergamont Project is a consortium between Mozilla and several universities to get a privacy-focused local applications for translation. Now, this actually is going to be a good thing in that once this system is set up properly, any program could be able to access it and doing language conversions locally. There are actually some open source language models. I'm not sure if they do it locally. I don't think they do, but at least you have a few open source options so you can see the types of things that are going on in the background. But what the Ver Bergamont project specifically is trying to do is uh, it says here, no need to send your translations out to the cloud. The Bergamont project implements free client side translations uh, software as a web extension for Mozilla Firefox. This is what they are looking to embed directly into the browser. Some of you out there are going to declare this excess bloat that you're never going to need. And some of you might say, finally, this might be the very thing that gets me back to using Firefox. So what they want to do local, unlike cloud-based translations, it's done locally using machine learning for optimiz uh, optimized for consumer hardware. And then private, the text translated is never sent to a third party. So they're downloading all of the models and then allowing the system. So if you're never going to visit a wet Russian site, you just keep the Russian language model off of there. So that's what uh, that's the, the way that they're going to work. And then they are working on publishing more than a dozen languages. And then there's more that are still in development. So let's see. I don't know if they have. A full list yet um, so this is going to be your downside it's not going to be as you know, ubiquitous of uh, as uh, Google is but it's definitely more privacy focused Bulgarian Czech English Estonian French Polish and Spanish those are the ones on this site although it does look like um, over here Spanish Estonian English German Czech Bulgarian Portuguese in Italian, French, and Polish. So, and then they're working on a few development ones as well. And presumably, as the Bergamot project gets larger, then they'll be able to support more models. So, not nearly as many languages, but certainly a better approach. Now, what are people saying? Let's go ahead and allow that once uh, the discus for discussion. So, people are saying uh, the feature is indeed in beta. Uh, they said he said questions are not translated to Spanish correctly gets to add your, uh, what is that thing called? The uh, inverted question mark? I don't know. Uh, sorry. No, no, but I spin Plus, in discus adds more nonsense, big size Q after every username. Hmm, okay. So, languages should be installed by default to not make you waste your time. This is the one I disagree here with Daniel because that would be excessive blow. This is one of the huge, huge criticisms I have of Linux Mint. They have so many languages by default that it almost doubles the size of their distro. They could cut off about a gigabyte of stuff if they just leave off extra language models, particularly LibreOffice on Linux Mint. It wants to download language, like hundreds of languages help models. Like, I don't need any of that crap. Sorry. So, no, it should not be wasting your time. It should, uh, it should not be downloading anything because I don't want the bloat. I am... I might translate a website every year, maybe. And so the reality is I do not want the extra bloat. I do not want it to have all of these translations locally stored, waiting for the chance that I might land on a Russian website. No, thank you. Uh, so I do like their approach where I would have to manually download the languages because, you know, if you know your... Uh, if you know that you're visiting one specific website and that website is not in your native tongue and you want the language models for that native tongue, then you can do that. But if you're never moving anywhere beyond that, that's why I think Firefox approach here is the most appropriate. Uh, apparently there was a translation in mobile that was taken out. So this poor, poor guy is forced to use Chrome. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. That's a fate worse than death, isn't it? Mm. Finally, important feature that made me stop using Firefox. He uses Edge now because of all the features, but he wants to get back to Firefox once this feature is ready. So there's a vote for using it. This is something I would use. Cannot wait to get it. Hope it does decent translations. So, uh, and uh, as Naya here points out, you can already get it. You just need to install the Firefox translations. All this change looks like is implementing this extension into the core of Firefox. 
So I think that um, that's good if you are already looking for language models. If you're being forced to use a browser you don't want to, you can use Firefox with that extension, which is an official Mozilla extension. Okay, it's not like done by um, um, some weird hacker in his basement capturing all the stuff. So, of course, we all have concerns about Mozilla. I do as well. But we got to call out the good parts when we see the good parts out there as well. So this guy says he'd be interested in what company or technology. And again, it is the Bergamot project. So that was really my big concern and why I wanted to do the video is looking at the translation. Is this just a back end for Google or is this something else? And it does appear to be using the Bergamot translation system. But uh, as soon as Firefox fills out this placeholder page, we will probably get a little bit more insight into that. And uh, so we'll keep an eye out and see what in the world is going on. So let me see, Firefox version, there's 116. Yeah, nothing on that one either. So uh, with that, let me know your thoughts about this. Is this something that you are looking forward to or something you're like, eh, whatever. Uh, let me know all that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.